Hi, I'm Sean Devine, and I want to show you today how evolution can generate living systems distant from equilibrium. I use a whole systems approach to evolution to show, from an information perspective, how order emerges uh, naturally in living systems, despite what intelligent design advocates might claim. This new approach to evolutionary systems sees natural laws as computations. This allows algorithmic information theory, or Kolmogorov complexity as it is known, to provide mathematical insights into computational processes. In this case, the meaning of order becomes clear. And as in this context, entropy is well-defined far from equilibrium, one can understand the entropy requirements of evolving far from equilibrium living systems. As seen from a computational perspective, living replication processes generate order. Ordered structures are distant from the disorder of equilibrium. The degree of order is this distance measured in computational bits. And although thermodynamics constrains the evolutionary trajectory, there is no need for intelligent design arguments to explain how order emerges in nature. First, what is order in the natural world? Order is embodied in the surprise structures that are simpler to describe than disordered ones. Such a surprise would be my face if it appeared by chance on a screen. And I show how these surprise structures emerge through natural replication processes, driving a living system further from equilibrium. Replication uses stored energy while ejecting disorder as waste and heat, thereby increasing the carrying capacity of the system. I'm a collection of replicating cells that most of the time cooperate to drive my body as far as possible from the ultimate death and decay of my equilibrium destiny. Ordered structures are simpler to describe. For example, an image on a one megapixel screen. Here we have an ordered image, that of me, that only requires 110,000 bits to generate it. Whereas a maximally disordered image, the equivalent to an equilibrium situation, is generated by a million bits because each pixel needs to be specified. Natural ordered structures are also simpler to describe. For example, in the natural world, we see order in the screen of life, so to speak, in this tree here. An ordered tree is specified by the DNA, the growth algorithm, and the external inputs that help to grow the tree. If the energy is turned off, the tree returns to a disordered state of a random pile of chemicals. Algorithmic entropy and the degree of order are the two key concepts of this talk. The algorithmic entropy H is the number of instruction bits that shift one state to, other, to another, or in the natural world, one configuration to another. This picture of me requires 110,000 bits in the algorithm that generates this picture from a blank screen. On the other hand, this disordered outcome requires a million bits because each pixel needs to be specified. The difference between these two situations is called the degree of order. It is the difference in bits between the random picture or an equilibrium situation and the ordered one. In this case, it is 890,000 bits. So too in the natural world. Here we have a tree, a living tree, highly ordered, Energy from the sun feeds into it. The nutrients are, the, uh, are input and the DNA computes. In a sense, the DNA replicates each cell and oxygen and carbon dioxide flow in. The tree is a highly ordered system of replicating cells. The algorithmic entry is given by the bits in the replicating algorithm plus the bits specifying the resources that are accessed. So the algorithmic entropy is that of the cell and its DNA, the nutrient bits that flow in, and the log of n, where n is the number of times a cell has to replicate. At equilibrium, following death and decay, the decay tree is, needs to be specified by zillions of bits because it's just a random pile of uh, different chemical constituents. 
the degree of order in this case is zillions less the number of bits needed to specify the tree. The algorithmic entropy of a structure then is the computational bits to specify the structure. Natural laws express computations on a real world universal, universal Turing computer that shift one state to another. As one universal computer can simulate another, the bits or whatever uh, base you use uh, to do the simulation are independent of the universal computer as the simulation constant between different computers, including real world ones, cancels. The algorithmic entropy H is the equivalent number of bits in a reversible program P that generates the structures from an initial state. These instructions represented as bits need no end markers in order to mimic real world computations. So here we have the degree of order, uh, the difference between a disordered structure or an equilibrium structure and an ordered one. Ordered structures are generated with fewer bits and that's why the image of me can be compressed by 890,000 bits. Now I want to show how replication processes create order in the natural world. Replication triggers a chain reaction that consumes resources until the carrying capacity is reached. Example of flour, the magnetization of iron, the liquefying of a gas, the formation of ice. And for these kinds of processes, latent heat as disorder, or in thermodynamics terms, entropy, needs to be expelled. More complex replication processes require the input of stored energy, uh, as well as the ejection of heat and waste. Uh, the ordered photons emitted from a laser require the input of energy to excite the atoms or molecules uh, and the uh, ejection of waste and heat. An archetypical replicating system is one bacterium given by this uh, star here in a soup of nutrients. And here we see the one bacterium replicating until it reaches the carrying capacity when all the resources are used up. One bacterium continues to replicate, producing millions or billions of bacteria over quite short periods of time. And I will show that once you have variation and selection acting on these replicating processes and stored energy, in the form of resources are available, these systems can be maintained far from equilibrium, undermining to some extent the second law of thermodynamics. The system at its carrying capacity is maximally ordered, and then the uh, components die until finally it reaches it. The thermodynamic interpretation is that bits are a measure of entropy. From Landau's principle, the reversible transfer of one bit to a thermal state, temperature T, is associated with the transfer of 10 to the minus 23 times the temperature joules of energy. And this is because Boltzmann's constant times log two is 10 to the minus 23. Hence the thermodynamic entropy flow to or from the thermal states from a computational perspective is the bit flows by 10 to the minus 23. However, it's only the thermal bits that measure the thermodynamic entropy. Bits characterizing stored energy configurations are potential entropy only. Disorder arises from the second law of thermodynamics. So such surprise ordered outcomes in the natural world are measured by the degree of order because this represents structures distant from equilibrium. Understanding the entropy of the structure and the degree of order helps us to identify and understand order in the natural world. Instruction bits and structures carrying stored energy decay in the system, finally releasing bits into the thermal states, increasing the thermodynamic entropy. That's the second law of thermodynamics in motion. Order is re-established when heat bits are ejected and new structures carrying bits and instructions into the system, carrying stored energy 
and the entropy or bit flows maintain the system distant from equilibrium. The mathematicians have a test of randomness called the martin Lurf test, which identifies ordered or surprise outcomes. Would this image on a screen be a surprise? Well, it would be if it occurred by chance. And how could we tell? This test says, or one version of this test says, we place a dollar bet that such an image would appear by chance. And let the return on this outcome be two to the power of the degree of order. As most outcomes are random, the bet is fair, the expected return is less than one. But for these surprise outcomes, enormous returns become possible if they happen. So my image is indeed a surprise, highly ordered outcome with a degree of order of 890,000. So the return is two to the power of $890,000 or 10 to the $267,917. An enormous return, such a surprise ordered outcome in the natural world measured by the degree of order rep represents a structure distance from equilibrium and it is a complete surprise. But here we need to clarify what the word information means because it is used in different ways and creates awful confusion. As is shown later, this leads to inconsistencies and invalid arguments about why or how order arises. Mathematically, information is the number of bits to generate a particular outcome. Or if you want to use the Shannon information terms, it's the number of bits to identify an outcome in a set of possibilities. The more ordered the system, the fewer the bits in both cases and the less information. But confusingly, the intelligent data design community use a term complex specified information or more recently specified information to, to describe ordered structures that they feel somehow require more information. Their specified information has the same properties as this well-defined degree of order that we have here. It is a measure of surprise rather than information. I want to show how replication processes generate the order that characterizes living system. Natural order is generated by replicating structures that both cooperate and compete. Uh, and they do this to maximize the order of the system. If two bacterial types compete for the same resources, the one with the highest carrying capacity dominates. That creates the most ordered uh, system. And the other uh, type, completely or virtually completely disappears. And where two different replicating systems enhance each other's existence, as happens when a bird or a, or a, or a bee enhances a, a tree and allows it to bear fruit, the carrying capacity of both is higher. The order increases. The tree gains because of the bee and the bee gains because of the tree or the flower. Interdependent replicating systems increase the carrying capacity of a natural system. And if you allow for variation in the DNA selection processes, the thermodynamics favors nested and interdependent structural forms that are more efficient. That over millennia, these optimize the use of resources from the viewpoint of the flow through of entropy. A rich ecology is further from equilibrium than a one species ecology. The antelope eats the grass, the lions eat the resources in the antelope, the dung beetle reprocesses their waste and the carrion processes their carcass. This has been verified by Schneider and Kay who measured heat dissipation uh, in a, a complex ecology and a simple one. And the heat dissipation is much higher than the complex ecology because it is processing the energy flowing in much more efficiently and uh, ejecting more high entropy waste. Nature uses replication and selection to drive the system further from equilibrium. So we can see how a system can maintain itself 
uh, further from equilibrium. And here we have a bacterial system. The resource bits flow in, bacteria die, but they're regenerated uh, by the resources coming in and they are maintained far from equilibrium, provided bits in the form of heat and decayed products are ejected. Or in a more general interconnected replicating system, where we have systems nesting, replicating systems, nesting, replicating systems, and so on, the bits that flow in in the form of concentrated energy maintain the overall system. They share resources with each other, either voluntary or not so voluntary when the lion eats the antelope, but in so doing, they drive the system further from equilibrium as the heat bits that leave and the, and the, the, the as higher entropy than the waste that leaves the system. Intelligent design champions confuse order and information. They claim that highly ordered outcomes in the natural world would have greater information, as I mentioned, complex specified information or specified complexity or whatever. Apparently, these outcomes are so surprising, the argument goes that like a Shakespearean sonnet, they could not occur by natural processes, but require intelligent intervention, an intelligent intervention. But I've shown how replication processes do produce surprise outcome without the need for an intelligent intervention. The trouble was with the intelligent design argument, it confuses information in the DNA instructions with the specified information characterizing a surprise outcome. In other words, it, um, it muddles H with the degree of order. And hence their claims uh, that DNA, DNA instructions measured by H and bits cannot produce body plans or generate genetic and ontogenetic specified information. Uh, they say that can't happen. And the argument is that natural selection acts after the functional information occurs. But these uh, are just the surprise outcomes characterized by the degree of order. And they do emerge through replication processes with variation and selection. So the intelligent design argument is invalid because the environment selects in the case on the right, the generation for the next seed. So we have the seeds down at the bottom. Some of them are unable to grow because they're not suited for the environment. And the few that do grow are slightly different, slightly better adjusted to the environmental constraints. And so over time, the order increases. And if cooperation occurs between different replicating systems, the order increases more. So understanding interconnected replicating systems helps us to understand life. From a whole systems perspective, replication processes maximize the system's order. Resource constraints eliminate less efficient variants with lower carrying capacity. Selection processes drive life on Earth further from equilibrium, further than it would have been without replication. And despite setbacks, the odd meteor strike and so on, the system continually readjusts and uh, drives itself further from equilibrium, creating more complex ordered system. So while this argument undermines the intelligent design approach, it actually offers something else extremely interesting. Life has direction. My arguments show that evolution does have direction. It may not have purpose, I think it does, but it may not have purpose, but it has direction. Our part of the universe is designed to ensure pockets of order crystallized in the form of life and systems like the earth and the sun, while the universe itself becomes more disordered. It is not you or I who are important, but life itself. And like the anthropic principle, our part in the universe seems to be designed, or our part of the universe seems to be designed to create ordered living things, becoming further from equilibrium over billions of years. Thank you.